In the space race, there is no stranger to the heated battle between two giants in the rocket launch industry. They are Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin and Elon Musk's SpaceX. Over the past two decades, Jeff Bezos has dedicated significant efforts to research and development. However, in reality, Blue Origin has not been able to surpass Musk's SpaceX. Despite this, the rivalry doesn't end with rockets alone. Recently, Bezos has unveiled an even more ambitious plan involving satellites aiming to challenge SpaceX's Starlink project. So where did it all begin? And is there any chance for them to beat Musk's SpaceX? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. In the past few years, companies have been striving to extend internet access via satellite, both as commercial ventures and to provide internet connectivity to remote locations with limited accessibility. The largest of these ventures is Starlink, a mega constellation of over 4,000 satellites developed by Elon Musk's SpaceX. However, Amazon's founder, Jeff Bezos, who also owns Blue Origin, does not intend to let SpaceX dominate the entire sky for too long. He's got his own plan called Project Kuiper, which is a similar low Earth orbit initiative to rival Musk's Starlink. The latest update on Amazon's pursuit of SpaceX is their decision to construct a new satellite processing facility at NASA's Kennedy Space Center with an investment of 120 million US dollars. The facility will be built on a former space shuttle landing strip and is expected to provide Amazon with ample space to integrate the their satellites with their contracted rockets. Project Kuiper is part of Amazon's plan to connect the world to the internet, with a total of 3,236 Kuiper satellites scheduled for launch by 2029. This sounds highly promising and exciting, however what they say and what they actually achieve can be two completely different things. With such a large-scale endeavor, can Amazon actually catch up with Starlink? We must consider what Amazon has accomplished so far. And to be honest, their Project Kuiper is already lagging behind SpaceX's Starlink broadband satellite network by four years, which has already garnered over one and a half million global subscribers. Amazon announced Project Kuiper back in 2019, the same year when Starlink began its launches, leading Elon Musk to call Bezos, who was then Amazon's CEO, a copycat. If you want to compete with people like Musk, the founder of SpaceX and Tesla, you better have deep pockets. Amazon took a similar approach and revealed that it had essentially secured all the spare rocket launch capacity in the world. Although the exact figure is not disclosed, they could be spending well over 10 billion US dollars on these launches. It's an astronomical amount in the commercial launch industry. With multi-billion dollar contracts in place with United Launch Alliance, Blue Origin, and Ariane Space in Europe, Project Kuiper satellites are expected to carry out 92 different launches within the next five years. However, what's unfortunate for Amazon is that they are still one step behind SpaceX, simply because Amazon lacks its own rockets and no one in the industry can compete with SpaceX's Falcon 9 in terms of pricing or launch frequency. Falcon 9 rockets can be launched up to 100 times in a year, and due to SpaceX's ability to reuse the first stage in payload fairing, the internal cost per launch is likely significantly lower, possibly around $30 million. In contrast, Amazon is like a money-spending machine that may spend at least three times as much more for each launch. Whatever the case may be, Amazon is currently facing risks for their contracted rockets. None of the three rockets Amazon has chosen has proven themselves in flight. Two of Amazon's prototype satellites were expected to launch on ULA's Vulcan Centaur rocket in May, but a test explosion and other technical issues have delayed the launch until late 2023. Additionally, the first flight of Project Kuiper on the Ariane 6 rocket is probably happening later this summer, and as for new global it is likely at least two years away from its first flight. Despite the delay, Amazon says it'll start producing satellites at its facility in Kirkland, Washington by the end of this year and that it expects production launches in early enterprise customer pilots in 2024. We have an ambitious plan to begin Project Kuiper's full-scale production launches and early customer pilots next year and this new facility will play a critical role in helping us deliver on that timeline. Kuiper Production Operations VP Steve Mateer said in a statement, 
Amazon has set ambitious goals for its rockets, aiming to achieve a high flight frequency to fulfill its current and future missions, including Project Kuiper. For instance, the Ariane 6 rocket, originally planned for 6 to 9 launches annually, is now facing increased demand since the Soyuz vehicle is no longer available for European satellites. As a consequence, it's uncertain how quickly the Ariane 6 will be able to adapt and accommodate three or more missions annually from Amazon. This move by Amazon is a significant boost to SpaceX's competitors in the Western launch market. SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket had already taken away a considerable share of commercial launches from Ariane Space as well as numerous military and NASA missions from the United Launch Alliance. Now, with Jeff Bezos investing heavily in these launch providers, they are determined to compete with Elon Musk's SpaceX. It'll be intriguing to observe which of these companies can effectively execute their new rockets and achieve a high flight cadence in the coming years. However, it's reasonable to assume that not all three companies will succeed in meeting their ambitious targets. The competition will be intense and only time will reveal the ultimate victor in this space race. As of today, SpaceX has successfully launched nearly 4,500 Starlink satellites and has the option to increase this number to 12,000, which is almost four times the number of satellites that Amazon is allowed to launch. Among these satellites, there are three different types developed by Starlink, Gen 1, 1.5, and 2.0. The first two variants orbit the Earth at distances ranging from approximately 540 kilometers to 570, with weights ranging from 226 kilograms of the Gen 1 to 295 kilograms of the Gen 1.5. The Gen 2 satellites, being more powerful and offering greater bandwidth capabilities, weigh up to 1,250 kilograms. Additionally, Starlink has introduced a mini version of the Gen 2.0 satellites. While 1.0 and 1.5 satellites are transported using a series of Falcon rockets, the Gen 2.0 satellites will be primarily deployed using SpaceX's Starship rockets. However, the mini version is also transported on Falcon 9 rockets, but in smaller batches per launch, which is around 20 minis on the Falcon 9 compared to 50 to 60 version 1.5 satellites. Their ultimate goal for the Starlink internet service is even more ambitious, as they are currently seeking approval to expand the mega constellation to include a staggering 42,000 giant satellites. Amidst SpaceX's regular rocket launch routine, they have been scheduling Starlink missions to launch approximately once every two days. But besides Amazon and SpaceX, there are also many other companies involved in the satellite industry. OneWeb, based in London, is another early entrant in this industry. Additionally, various governments are eager to participate in the satellite race. China has plans to launch 13,000 satellites as part of the Guo Wang constellation. Meanwhile, Canada's Telesat is aiming to add 300 satellites, and German startup Rivada has set its sights on launching 600 satellites. The European Union is also involved with its IRIS project, which involves launching 170 satellites. Furthermore, the U.S. military's Space Development Agency, or AFP, intends to deploy 300 to 500 satellites. In the future, internet services are anticipated to undergo further development, resulting in heightened competition within the satellite industry. However, before Amazon can proceed with the deployment of the Kuiper project, they must wait for their contracted rockets to become flight ready. To close the gap with SpaceX and establish a competitive position, Amazon will require a significant amount of time and effort. Well, folks, that wraps up our show for today. We hope you enjoyed learning more about the amazing progress over at SpaceX, as well as what's going on with the satellite industry. Are you a big fan of Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin or Amazon's Project Kuiper? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. And if you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.